So when Madrid, we're at Fuse 2023. I'm here with Juan Carlos Garcia. He's Senior VP of Technology, Innovation and Ecosystem at Telefonica. Juan Carlos, great to have you with us again on Telecom TV. Thanks very much for joining us. You know, we're at the, the Fuse event. It's all about uh, open networks, uh, disaggregated networks. Are operators really convinced, do you think, that open networks can deliver what they need for the future? Well, I can say that um, we were um, somehow believing on, on the open solutions, and now we start seeing facts you know, that this is working, and it's a reality for us. No? Uh, and we start seeing this in many domains. You know? For instance, in the transport domain, it was a dream uh, some years ago to think that we could disaggregate the hardware from the software, no? from the routing software. And this is a reality in things like the distributed cell site uh, gateway. No? You could listen this morning that we have more than close to 30,000 units already deployed worldwide. And uh, also the announcement of Cayetano Carvajal, my colleague at Telefonica, saying that we were now uh, going to run in, a, in, a, in Germany, in one of our big operations, uh, the first swap of open solutions. So we are going to keep the hardware, that is an Edge Core hardware, and then replace more than uh, 1,000 uh, routers with the new software from another vendor. And this is really a fact, and, and, and it's something that probably has never happened before, and, and give us you know, a view of what open networks are no? and, and, and what they can bring. We are seeing uh, similar things on, on backbone routers, so they are getting to that level of maturity. We are considering that in, in our procurement processes. And uh, probably what there is still work to be done and, and still uh, some, some uh, you know, developments to be you know, where we want to be is in open run. No? There have been a lot of criticisms always about energy efficiency, performance, and all this stuff. So it looks like that uh, you know, things are changing with the new silicon technology, with the run intelligent controller. So we have now mechanisms to improve you know, the, the, the efficiency and the performance of open solutions. And we expect to be not just at the level of traditional, but even beyond you know, the characteristics of traditional. So we are still seeing the light uh, at the end of the, of the tunnel, the long tunnel of open run. There are, of course, things that we need still to set up to get to, to this uh, to become a, a massive commercial reality. And this is the need for a, 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 an integration and testing uh, process that scales. No, uh, we need to have diversity of open uh, systems in open run, open, open solutions, and we need a, a test and certification scheme. And, and that is where uh, TIP is also bringing a lot of efforts now, and, uh, and probably we will see you know the results in, in 2024. So, is the vision still one of best of breed uh, multi-vendor architectures? Because you know, sometimes we're seeing uh, we have an open network here, but it's maybe only one or maybe two vendor partners. But is that just a sign of an early stage development? Is it still, you know, the, the, the vision that in the future there will be a plug and play multi vendor swap in, swap out? Well, uh, this um, best of breed multi vendor architecture is something that is not new for us. So it's something that we are applying for years in the IT domain and has been very successful. So this is the same approach we are now pretending to, to follow with networks. Um, it will take some time, of course, because to be able to make a best of breed in a dynamic and agile way, you need to have your network in the cloud, your network virtualized, your network digital, uh, properly appified. And once you have that, then you can mix and match components uh, easily. No? The integration and testing effort is probably one of the things that takes more uh, energy from, from telecom operators and the industry in general. And if you do a proper digitalization of your network, uh, that will help. So yes, so uh, we think um, best of breed multi-vendor is the future. So already at this uh, event here in Madrid, we've heard a lot of talk about industry collaboration in, in lots of different ways. Uh, how important is that uh, through organizations such as TIP uh, to achieving these cost-effective and, and sustainable open networks? Yeah. Well, collaboration is fundamental. So, um, and, and in many aspects, no? uh, there is probably not a single chance that a, a telecom operator on its own can uh, design, uh, develop, integrate, test, and, and run, and, and operate and evolve a system on its own, no? not even the bigger operators. So we need a collaboration in the industry, and this collaboration is, is probably more important in two aspects. 
So the first one is in the in setting the, the requirements for the system uh, and the priorities. Uh, and this is extremely relevant because you have um, the companies developing the com technological components for the for the for the open solutions, uh, you know, uh, requiring you know, the operators to, to say what they want. Okay. So that they, they, they develop solutions that can find a place in the market and that can have some market potential. So the first collaboration is that, so giving indications to the market on, on where uh, should the first products uh, go. Uh, and second is on, on the testing and integration effort. Um, again, this is probably consuming a lot of energy. Uh, operators will have to share um, experiences with trials, um, RFIs, but also uh, probably use a common uh, scheme for testing and certification. And this is also something that is trying to, to, to set up. No? Uh, to define the scheme and also create a network of laboratories worldwide where you know uh, component and, and system integrators can take full system full systems for test certification uh, and that is absolutely required if we want to get into production networks massively uh, and collaboration between industry organizations as well i mean yeah, of course yeah. yeah yeah i forgot to mention that is extremely relevant so there is uh, probably a starting point that is standards. So without the standards, there are no open solutions. But uh, also there is a work to be done after the standards that is somehow simplify or limiting the standards. The standards many times have plenty of options that make uh, systems uh, not interoperable. And uh, probably one of the tasks of communities like TIP is defining profiles to make uh, you know, components more easier to integrate. No? So there's, there's clearly progress and we've seen that and we've heard that from uh, operators and, and other actors in the industry already today. But what, what needs to happen within the next year to encourage even greater investment from more operators into open disaggregated networks? Because there's still a sense that some operators are leading the, other, uh, leading the way and others are maybe hanging back and maybe not quite doing so much. Yeah, it is true. Uh, probably there needs to be a lot of education of the industry in general. Uh, not all operators are equally skilled and trained. So this is the reason why we are promoting the TIP Academy from TIP, trying to you know, uh, share the experience and knowledge of the most advanced operators with the rest of the industry. This is very relevant. It is also very relevant that we start seeing competitive products in the market. And when I say competitive, I mean uh, in terms of efficiency, performance and costs as well. And, and for this, uh, you will first to apply, you know, the new technologies, the new silicon technologies and, and new um, elements like the running intelligent controller, uh, but also uh, try to align requirements and priorities. So, I mean, the, bet the more we align in the operator community the requirements, the better, you know, the, the providers will be able to focus on products that are really useful and can be sold. No? And then uh, we will see more of these products coming, okay, really meeting the, the, the operator needs. Uh, and also we'll, we will see how, you know, the network of testing and certification labs grow. Okay, and this is what is finally bringing a portfolio of alternatives, of open, open so, uh, solution alternatives to the traditional ones uh, that will probably encourage operators that are not so advanced to go into procurement processes for this. So next year, I think, will be a pivotal year for, for uh, open technologies in general. Uh, and uh, TIP is making, you know, the final push, you know, to really take, take uh, disaggregated solutions really to the, to the production phase. Now, uh, we've talked on a, on a number of occasions about open APIs, and this is a topic that, that's really rising up uh, the, the conversations uh, across the industry, uh, particularly uh, in 2023. How important is the development and deployment of open APIs to these open disaggregated networks? Well, the relevance of open APIs is, is twofold. So on one side, it is absolutely necessary to have open and standard interfaces for integration with other components. Okay, that is absolutely necessary for an, an easy integration. Uh, and the second is uh, to be able to expose the capabilities of the component also to upper layers uh, to be able to offer those capabilities, the capabilities of the open components, also to external uh, partners. No? Uh, so this is something that is ongoing, as you know, um, uh, with the Open Gateway Initiative at the GSMA, uh, with the Camara Linux Foundation project, also standardizing the APIs. Uh, we will um, see, probably initially, or we are seeing initially some uh, APIs that are associated to IT systems, to identity management systems, to, to 3GPP systems. We will see in the future also APIs 
actually uh, accessing transport networks or radio networks for uh, several um, capabilities. A slicing that we were talking about in some of the panels here, you know, run slicing, so it's another capability that we expect to be exposed uh, and available. And yes, open APIs, uh, I think for telecom operators, represent a, a, an opportunity you know, for new, new business model, new, new revenue streams that are very necessary in the industry today. Thanks so much for joining us, Juan Carlos, uh, and, and bringing us up to date with what's going on. Thank you. A pleasure.